forecast first on Color 10 News, Ozarks First. We did have a couple showers across much of the Ozarks, really through much of the afternoon. Not a whole lot of measurable rain, though, which we do still need. Earlier this morning, we did have a severe round of weather that moved through. And later tonight, we do have another round of storms coming through. In terms of severity, I think it will be very limited. In terms of temperatures today, it was a very warm day here in Springfield. Temperatures around 97 here, about 93 in Branson, and it did hit 100 down in Fayetteville temperatures right now across the Ozarks. Still pretty warm. Temperatures in the upper 70s to lower 80s, around 79 here in Springfield. A less humid and more pleasant weekend ahead and into next week as well. I'll show you my seven day in just a little bit. Color 10 News at 10 starts now. Now, from Ozarks First, you're watching Color 10 News at 10. I couldn't see anybody. I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't hear screams. I just, it felt like I was out there on my own. And I was yelling and I was screaming. And finally I said, Lord, just let me die. Let me die. I said, I can't, I can't keep drowning. I just can't keep drowning because that's how I felt. And then I just let go. We begin our coverage with a victim of yesterday's Ride the Ducks boat tragedy on Table Rock Lake. Good evening, I'm Heather Lewis. Tia Coleman, who is critically injured from that accident, is part of the family that lost nine members when the boat sank last night. That family called our newsroom, hoping to share their story. Our Frances Lynn spoke to Tia Coleman. Frances, what did she talk about? Heather, Tia told me she goes on family vacations all the time. When they got to Branson, they actually went to the wrong duck boat business, but then she switched out her ticket for the 6.30 ride. Less than an hour later, Coleman would be one of two members of her family on that boat ride to survive. She told me what she remembered about the accident. A duck boat tour usually travels on land and water. Tia Coleman says she was told the tour will go on the water excursion first because of the incoming storm. She describes the captain taking over when they reached the lake. Once he takes over, there's big, huge waves choppy and everybody start getting like, hey, this is a little bit too much. And then it got really choppy and big swells of water start coming into the boat. Then a really huge wave swept over and when that wave swept over. The last thing I heard my sister-in-law yell was grab the baby. That's when the boat started sinking. And my head pushed up to the top of the water and I lost control. I didn't have anybody with me. I couldn't see anybody. And I know it wasn't, but it felt like I struggled for, it felt like I struggled for at least an hour. Um, but it was probably like 10 minutes. And I just remember I kept sinking, I kept sinking. And she was drowning and describes the water as being very cold. And I started floating. I was floating up to the top. I felt the water temperature raise to warm. And as I felt the water temperature raise, I jumped up and I saw the big boat that sits out there. I don't know what kind of boat it is. It's huge, though. It was a rescue boat with people throwing life jackets into the water. And I said, Jesus, please keep, keep me. Just keep me so I can get to my children. Keep me, Lord. And I was swimming. I was swimming as fast as I could. And I couldn't reach. I could not reach the life jackets. She had to swim to the rescue boat. I swam over to the boat and I was holding on. But my legs and arms were so heavy from, from trying. They were so heavy. It was so heavy. She was then transferred to the Cox Health Hospital and is still in the process of recovering. Coleman told me about the 10 family members she was with, starting with her sister-in-law. She was there with her 13-year-old and her soon-to-be 3-year-old. I was there with my husband and our three children, who were nine seven and one. My in-laws were there, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law and the uncle who lives with them. She also told me there were life jackets, were life jackets on board. On they told us they're up here. This is where they are. They showed us where they were. They said, but don't worry about it. You won't need it. And we said, okay. So when the captain took over, I thought that at some point he would say, grab the jackets now. But we were told to stay seated, and everybody stayed seated. Nobody, nobody grabbed it. When that, when that boat is found, all those life jackets are going to be on there because nobody pulled one off. You don't, you know, you weren't supposed to grab them unless you were in distress, which we were, but he told us don't, we don't need them. Um, it was 
I don't know what to say. It's definitely, it's definitely life changing, life altering event. The only other surviving family member on that boat ride was her 13 year old nephew. Tia doesn't know when she'll be able to leave the hospital, but Cox Health tells Color 10 that doctors are optimistic that she is on the right path to a full recovery. And there's some good news there for her. Very difficult story to share, and we thank her for that. And also our hearts go out to her family. And we have learned that Tia and her family are from Indianapolis. A pastor of their hometown church came forward today saying though they weren't members of the church, he was still close to them. I shared with them that, uh, that we as a church family were praying for them, and that they had a lot of people here in Indianapolis that were praying for them. Uh, this is not a time where you can, you know, go into a lot of discussion about a lot of things. Officials with the National Transportation Safety Board just held a news conference in Branson, and this is the new information they shared. Their focus over the next few days will be interviewing survivors and witnesses. Investigators will be in Branson for the next 10 days. It will be months before a preliminary report is ready, and it will take investigators about a year to release an official cause of the crash to the public. Tonight, several vigils were held to honor those lost at Brookside Church in Brinson. Mourners lit candles, sang oh, hymns, yeah. and prayed for the families of the victims and the first responders. Cindy Reich, who is a member of Brook Brookside Church, told us why the church wanted to host this event. We wanted to be sure and hold up our community, let people know that we are here, that we I have a lot of friends and family who were part of the responders uh, and on the Branson Bell. Um, we did not know anyone that was on the decks, but we want them to know that we love them, that we are here, and that uh, this is a community that helps support each other. Reich tells us Branson has been blessed to be shared from, spared rather, from tragedies like this, and it's important for the community to come together. Last night, seven people were brought into the hospital. One of them declined treatment. So out of the six survivors currently still in treatment, three are adults and three are kids under the age of 18. Two of the survivors are in critical care after being very close to drowning last night. One of those is Tia Coleman, who you just heard from. The other four suffered minor injuries, and doctors say they are optimistic that they will all soon get better. We spoke with Carrie Coleman, the marketing communications director for Burl Behavioral Health, about the services Burl is offering to those affected by this tragedy, including first responders. We have a crisis stabilization team that works at Burl all the time, and, and in circumstances like this, when um, there's a traumatic event that can impact the community, um, we're often uh, brought in to help um, deal with the trauma and uh, minimize the impact that it's going to have and give people coping skills um, for how to work through it. Counselors will be at Cox Hospital's Dogwood Community Room tomorrow. There's also a crisis line. That number is 1-800-494-7355. Coleman tells us if there's a greater need in the community, counselors will be there past tomorrow. Well, there were dozens of heroes when the duck boats sank, risking their own lives to save others. Many were nearby at the State Park Marina. A team there began to secure their area, making sure all of the customers were off the dock. Then Roger Carpenter, State Park Marina manager, says he and the 16-year-old son of the marina owner got on their boat to help. When they arrived on scene, there was no duck boat and only life gear floating. Shortly after, they heard a scream and saw two men who jumped off the Branson Bell to save a lady who was on the duck. They came from the back of the Branson Bell. They were 500 yards down the lake from there. They were completely exhausted, still holding on to a lady that was deceased. Missouri Governor Mike Parson made a point to thank the first responders who assisted in the rescues and continue to care for the victims' needs today. I want to thank all the responders that have been down here. I want to thank the sheriff. I want to thank the city of Branson. I want to thank the Missouri State Highway Patrol, their dive team who's still out in the water. 
uh, and will continue to be out on the water and all the other resources. I know the Coast Guard's here. There is a multiple agencies have come together to try to help with this tragic event to bring some sort of conclusion to it. Senator Claire McCaskill was grateful for both the city of Branson as well as its members. She says it's encouraging to see the professionalism and cooperation between state and local officials and the two federal agencies investigating this tragedy. I'm grateful to Mayor Best, the Red Cross, and the brave men and women of the Missouri Highway Patrol, particularly the divers who had the worst job of all today. My deepest condolences continue to go out to those families torn apart by this tragedy. Ride the Ducks Branson posted its condolences on Facebook, reading, we are deeply saddened by the tragic accident that occurred at Ride the Ducks Branson. This incident has deeply affected all of us. Words cannot convey how profoundly our hearts are breaking. We will continue to do all we can to assist the families who were involved and authorities as they continue with the search and rescue. The safety of our guests and employees is our number one priority. Ride the Ducks will be closed for business while we support the investigation and to allow time to grieve for the families and the community. Now, many of you are wondering how you can help the families of the victims. The Table Rock Lake Chamber of Commerce and the Branson Tri Lakes Chamber of Commerce have partnered with the SCAX Foundation to collect donations. There's a GoFundMe page account set up. You'll find a link to that page on OzarksFirst.com. You can also drop off donations at the SCAX Foundation office at Cox Medical Center in Branson. The Community Foundation of the Ozarks is also working with local leaders to support funeral, travel, and transportation costs for the victims and families, and they say they need your help. All tax-deductible donations can be made on the CFO website or sent to the foundation's physical mailing address. Well, the weather calm for most of the Ozarks tonight. Beth, will it stay that way? Yeah, Heather, it looks like we may have another round in southwest Missouri, northwest Arkansas overnight tonight. After that, a less humid and more pleasant weekend and week ahead. I'll have more on that coming up next. You're watching Color 10 News, Ozarks First with Heather Lewis. Weather with meteorologist Beth Finello. And sports with Dan Lucy. This is Color 10 News at 10. weather with meteorologist Beth Finello. Overall quiet night tonight. We did see 
A lot of sprinkles mainly across much of the Ozarks. Not a lot of measurable rain. We did have all these showers come in from the northwest as a cold front moves through the area. That cold front is going to bring less humid conditions to the Ozarks for much of the weekend and into next week as well. Temperatures today, though, were very high. It was a very hot day today here in Springfield. Specifically, temperatures were at 97, hit 93 in Branson, 96 in Harrison, and it did hit 100 down in Fayetteville, Arkansas. So it was a very hot day today. Temperatures right now across much of the Ozarks, really in the 70s, 79 here in Springfield, 79 down in Branson, and 76 up at Lake of the Ozarks dew points tonight still in the upper 60s to lower 70s so still very sticky out there not as oppressive as we saw today heat index not a whole lot to talk about now earlier this afternoon we did see heat indices up to 115 in some areas across much of the Ozarks so very hot one today in terms of rain chances overnight tonight mainly in southwest Missouri and Northwest Arkansas in terms of the severe threat not it's very limited is what we will see some heavier downpours really with these storms that will pop up through the overnight hours tomorrow we're going to see plenty of sunshine temperatures in the upper 80s to lower 90s looking at a high of around 91 here in Springfield. Now the storm system that came through yesterday and through this morning as well, that low pressure system is now moving east and southeast and we will stay mainly on the drier side of this storm through at least the middle of next week. So no rain chances in sight for the next five days. Overnight tonight, temperatures around 70. A few storms again could linger into the area over uh, tomorrow. Temperatures around 90, less humid, more beautiful summer day for tomorrow. That's also going to stick around into Sunday. Less humid conditions, lots of sunshine. Through the rest of the seven day, honestly, that's really what the forecast is looking like. Temperatures in the upper 80s to lower 90s across much of the Ozarks could get a little warmer in some spots in parts of northwest Arkansas and north central Arkansas as well. Overnight lows, more comfortable, more pleasant. Might be able to open your window for a little bit if you want. Temperatures will be in the upper 60s to lower 70s. But again, the main thing is that it will be less humid and more pleasant for yeah, well, the next couple of days. We'll probably definitely notice a difference with less humidity and even the temperatures in the lower 90s compared to the middle to upper 90s. Right, from what we've seen the past couple of days. Yes. Absolutely. All right, well, one number we don't mind going up is our Viewers Club. What's right. that? Viewers Club number tonight is 246-843. Our jackpot is currently at $800. All right, Beth, thank you. After the break, uh, we will tell you about another duck boat that sank in the Ozarks almost 20 years ago. Also up next, the history of the duck boat. Find out about the vessel's military ties right after this break.
It's now known two Arkansans were aboard the ride the Ducks boat yesterday at Table Rock Lake. They're part of the 17 victims who drowned when the boat sank during the storm. Haley Huey spoke with a family who says if there's anything good to come from this tragedy, it's that it's bringing the community closer together. See something like this happen, uh, it's definitely you know, shook our foundation. Hearing the news of the deadly duck boat accident shocked Glennon and Tonya Crazer. I don't know anybody that was on that boat. My heart goes out to all of them. The Crazers live in Branson and say they would have never thought to wear a life jacket on a duck boat before this tragedy. It means being a little uncomfortable uh, to have safety and it means to save your life. I uh, definitely think, you know, wearing it, uh, you should do. The Stone County Sheriff has yet to say if the victims were wearing life jackets, but according to Missouri law, you don't have to wear one on duck boats. Even if you can swim, things like this happen. You never know. Glennon says new laws are needed. Anything that can come positive out of this would be to wear the life jackets. Uh, I couldn't imagine losing my children um, or losing a grandparent or anything like that. Well, Crazier admits he simply can't imagine this happening to his family. One Russellville couple says they nearly fell victim to this accident. The Holy Spirit will talk to you sometimes. John McDaniel and his wife came close to getting on the boat that sunk, but he says something just didn't feel right. Some way, somehow, I decided not to do that. He considers not being on the boat a gift from God. To see those waves and, and how high they was and that little old boat trying to get through there, well, it was just devastating. We're just praying for those families. And happening around the region nearly 20 years ago, a similar duck boat accident claimed the lives of 13 people in central Arkansas. It happened in May of 1999 in Hot Springs. A survivor told a local paper the duck boat sank within 30 seconds of taking on water. This is video from the rescue efforts. The 20 people on board scrambled for life preservers as the duck boat sank in Lake Hamilton. People who live in condos nearby rushed to their boats to help. Emergency management officials say the seven survivors made it out because of those neighbors springing into action. Today, duck boats are still operating in Hot Springs, but that tragedy back in 1999 brought some big changes. The company that operated the boats back then went out of business. The owner of the company operating them today tells our sister station it's made some changes to the structure of the boat to make it safer. Each boat is inspected every day, and there are more than enough life vests on board for everyone. The duck boats have to be in compliance with Coast Guard standards, and drivers in Hot Springs must must complete three months of training before taking out Taurus. Well, if you're wondering where did duck boats come from, we have your answer. Our sister station, KMOV, tells us exactly how this amphibious vehicle came to life, and it has an extensive history. General Motors helped develop the duck boat in the early 40s to help the Allied forces, including the U.S., during World War II. The military-grade amphibious vehicle could operate on both land and water and get troops the supplies and reinforcements they desperately needed. After the war ended in 1945, the military allowed the public to buy extra supplies like these boats. Today, some are still used by tour companies across the country, while others have been built using a similar Design. Welcome to the court, Mr. Jack Sock. Want to catch you up on sports next? A Wimbledon champion brings his talents to Springfield. Dane Malloy is up next with highlights of Jack Sock's team tennis debut.
Recapping our top story tonight, 17 people dead in the Ride the Ducks boat accident, ranging in age from 1 to 70 years old. What caused this tragic accident is still being examined, including the impact of the weather. And the NTSB actually held a news conference just a little while ago saying that it will at least be one month before a preliminary cause is determined. The investigation itself could take about one year. We do know that victims are from around the nation. Six remain in the hospital, two in critical condition. We will be continuing to follow this story as it continues to develop over the weekend as well. So make sure you download that Color 10 News app. We'll be sending those alerts straight to your phone. And before we go, let's get a final check of our forecast. Sure, a little more pleasant temperatures tomorrow, less humid conditions for much of the weekend. Temperatures in the upper 80s to lower 90s. That's really how it's going to be through the rest of the week with lots of sunshine. All right, thanks for joining us for your news at 10. We'll see you again right here tomorrow night.